and in today's video I'm going to show you how to save a pot, basically turning it from this into this. Hello you dirty potters! How are you today? Today I want to show you something very, very important. By this time, you've most likely been playing around with a lot of glazes and other pots to the point where you might have this issue show up. This is what happens whenever glaze runs on your pot far too much and usually touches the shelf in which your pottery was sitting on in the kiln. Somewhere in your ceramic art journey, you are going to come across this problem. This problem is not easily fixed and it's actually way better to just figure out little techniques and ways around this than it is to go through the steps of fixing this. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix it and possibly how to save your pot so that way you can still use it or sell it as a very functional pot. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. This is actually the product of a crystal glaze I've been messing with that ran directly onto my kiln shelf. I put it on the kiln shelf, the crystal glaze ran way too much as sometimes it does, and well, now it has these super sharp jagged edges, and this is no longer a sellable pot. Granted, it'll still sit plumb. It'll still technically sit straight on a surface. Not only does it look gross, it pretty much indicates to everyone else that uh, you messed up. This pot here actually has a twin sister that had the same thing happen to her. The only difference is she is all nice and clean now, with none of this glaze at the bottom like the other one has. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to save a pot, basically turning it from this into this. Let's go through some of the things that I went through and you're probably going to go through as well while trying to get some of your pots to be saved. The first thing is a hammer. Don't worry, it's not for what you, th well, it is for what you think it's for, just not in the way you think it is. Firstly, when you get a pot like this, this is going to destroy your kiln shelf, so you should probably make a little line of glaze above this. But if this has already happened, your first inkling is to basically get a hammer and start chipping away at it like this. Granted, this probably will get some of the stuff off, but even if you go all the way around, and you keep on chipping this off and chipping this off and chipping this off, you're almost never going to get this big old white layer of glaze mineral or kiln wash, like some people kiln wash their shelves, off of the bottom ridge of this pot. This is here forever and ever until you grind it off. Not only that, it's pretty sharp even if you just use a hammer. The second step after using your hammer here and chipping it off is usually some people will get some type of sandpaper or grindstone and try and sand these down. If you try and sand these down, yeah, it'll smooth out a lot of your stuff, but you most likely won't get a lot of this texture off. It'll still look like a ruined pot. So other than using a hammer and sanding your stuff down to where it basically still looks like stuff ran, what do you do? This here is called a grinding bat. I got them from a company called Diamond Core, and they're actually super, super useful. This green one is their most coarse version of this Diamond Core sanding pad here. This is essentially a pot saver. If your pots end up running to the point where they look like this, you're gonna have to grind all of this stuff off onto the most coarse version of the thing they have. Granted, they do have a finer one, that's kind of the mid-range option, and that looks like this. This one's kind of in between grinding down some stuff that you want to just be a little bit more fine and stuff that you need to grind off. And although I don't have it, they do have a softer third option, which is kind of like sandpaper. It just smooths out your pots really nice so that you have a nice smooth bottom. But I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're most likely looking to fix something like this. So you're going to want the most coarse option. I will put a link down below if you want to buy one of these yourself to the Diamond Core website. They're a little bit expensive, but they are diamond grit and they really don't wear out that much. These Diamond Core scrub discs are actually attached to a bat. A very normal thing in pottery where you can pretty much put this on your wheel, throw your pot, and then take it right off without having to slide it off or do any extra work. Usually, these bats come with a set of something called bat pins. These bat pins will usually go inside of the holes of your wheel, which will stick the bat to each other on top of your wheel, much like this. These bat pins that are attached to the wheel and the bat itself will allow your wheel and the bat to spin simultaneously. The only difference is that this time, the one from Diamond Core has a grindstone or a diamond scrub pad on top of it. 
I know this isn't 2000 IQ or anything, but most of you can probably tell what we're about to do with this wheel, this bat, and this diamond style scrub pad right here. You can probably tell that we're about to grind this off in a certain pattern, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Two things before we do this. Number one, you're going to be flinging glass and ceramic-like material everywhere, either in this direction or that direction, because that's how a wheel spins. Number one, I would like for you to wear safety glasses. Actually, no, I wouldn't like for you to wear safety glasses. I demand that you wear safety glasses while you do this. Have you ever gotten a piece of silica or ceramic tile that is glass-like in your eye? If you said no, you don't want that. If you said yes, did you like it? Good, shut up and wear their glasses. Number two, this basically has the same rules as a whetstone, and anyone who's used a whetstone before probably knows you have to wet it a tiny bit before you start using it. Number one, it helps get a lot of the scuff off, and number two, it kind of helps with the hydroplaning effect a tiny bit. So right before you start grinding your pottery down with this, you want to take a little sponge, have a little source of water next to you like I do, and just wet it a small bit before you start grinding down your pottery. This will help with a couple of things, but canon-wise, this usually helps with not clogging up the grindstone or the sand disc with a lot of the superfluous stuff that comes off of your pot. Trust me, it makes little sense if you've never used a grindstone before, but it really helps. Using one of these grind discs is actually very easy. All you really have to do is attach the bat to the wheel, get your pot, make sure it's nice and flat, and start grinding away. Now if you have kind of a flange or something on your pot that goes outwards because it was sitting on your shelf, much like I do right here, you might want to angle your pot like this. I usually put this at a very level setting right here as I grind just to smooth out my pots while putting pretty good pressure down on the pot as it spins on the wheel, right? But this time I really need to get rid of this extra silica and glazed glass like material and I want it to go upwards this way. I don't want it going down and I don't want it going out. So I'm just going to curve my pot like this and make sure that it grinds along this angle. You can see that very easily on a couple of other things that I've already ground off. You see this right here? You see this cup right here? This cup actually had the same exact problem that cup that I just showed you did over there. The only difference is I'm done grinding this one out. This one is now baby bottom smooth. But if you look very closely, you can see the point at which the glaze touched the bottom of my kiln shelf and you can actually see the point or the angle in which I grinded it at. I clearly put it like this as it was spinning so that the glaze or the part that I grind off kind of points in this direction here. This is much easier to grind in this direction. So that's what we're gonna do next with this pot. Keep in mind that if your wheel spins this way, you want to hold it so that the wheel is going away from you. That means that I'm not gonna put water on this scrub pad here and put my pot over here because the disc being spinning this way means that all the silica and all the glass-like material is gonna come flying in my direction as I put it here. You would want to put it this way here, spinning away from you, right, as you do this. See that? The entire glaze-like flange that was at the bottom of this is now gone and at the angle that I said to grind it off at. Everything is now pointed up this way and you can see the glaze isn't even touching the bottom. This is nothing but pure clay body left. This is the first step in saving your pot. Now that you've gotten the majority of that flange off of there and everything is nice and smooth on the sides, it's now time to sand the bottom. This bottom portion here still has a lot of glaze and drippiness on it. Even though you've gotten rid of most of the sides, you still have to not only even this out, you still want to clean it up quite a bit. So your next and final step is just to firmly hold your pot at level as the sand disc spins on your wheel. All you really want to do is hold your pot down very firmly as it spins at a very even level. You can see potters on Instagram and TikTok doing this all the time. They'll pretty much spin their pot and hold it very, very level and evenly on the sand disc here. And there you go. Now you have a nice, clean, smooth bottom. And all you really had to do was get a little bit of water, 
get yourself a sanding disc or at least a regular old sander and just start grinding away. The key is that you want something relatively coarse, number one, and number two, you want to put as least energy as you can into it. I'm simply using this diamond core sand disc because, well, I can pretty much let it spin on my wheel. As a final step, you can probably see that this pot is almost pretty recovered. The glazed flange is no longer there, it's nice and smooth, it no longer has the ability to cut us. This is pretty good, I would say this pot is saved. But if you want to get a little bit more intricate and you notice that there's a little bit of glaze on the inner ring of your pot, there's a very easy way to save that as well. Unfortunately, it still requires you to either get a tool, dig out little chunks of it, or get yourself a Dremel. Unfortunately, it's super difficult for the diamond core pads to get on the inside of this trimmed foot right here. So the next best thing is to just get a Dremel and try and get out as much of that as you can. Granted, uh, an artist's eye will most likely be able to tell what's going on here, that this is a saved pot, but this definitely beats throwing away your pot or losing money on time and effort that you put into a pot that was either going to be sold or that you did for a commission and ended out a little bit bad. So, uh... You see, now you have a very nice, smooth, no-cut bottom. Even on the inside of the ring, nothing's gonna cut you because you dremeled it out. Potter tip! There's one small potter tip I wanna give you, potters, before we go. You see this little tumbler right here? This tumbler actually had the same exact glaze that this mug did on it right here. You can see the two glazes right there, the kind of lavender purplish glaze right there. It's a crystal glaze that I developed, and it loves to run, as you can tell. Well, this cup was actually in the same kiln load that that cup was in. The only difference is this has what is called a glaze line. A glaze line is something that potters have been using for quite some time. It's a relatively simple concept, and I thought about giving it an entire episode, but then I quickly realized that I can't exactly stretch this one idea out past like four minutes. So I'm just going to tell you what it is here. A glaze line is put inside of the bottom of a cup where the foot should be, usually during the throwing process, or you can put it in when the clay is still malleable when you're trimming during the leather processes. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's a line that helps glaze not go down to the very bottom of the foot of the pot. Granted, some of your stuff will still run. For example, this pot almost had a little accident down at the bottom right here. The only difference is it had to go through this tiny little gulch right here in order to get to the bottom of the foot so it never actually reached the very bottom of the foot. This is kind of a safety measure trick that a lot of potters have been using for a very long time. So if you find that a lot of your glazes are running to the bottom of your pots, you might want to start thinking about putting a glaze line as a safety measure at the bottom of a lot of your pots. It's very versatile and usually by this point, whenever I'm throwing a pot, I know, oh, I'm gonna put crystal glaze on this one. So I'm probably gonna put a glaze line on these five pots. Next time I glaze, I know, cool, these ones have the glaze line, therefore they get the runnier glazes. And this prevents me from having to do all of this work in the first place, leaving me with a nice clean foot. Granted, this isn't a 100% chance. It doesn't make it so like, this glaze line makes it so that you'll never have runny glaze again, or glaze that'll run to your kiln shelves again. But it does help a little bit. If you look really closely right there, you can see where the glaze bunched up and like tried to, to muster up the courage to go over that line, but couldn't do it. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for your, oh, actually, I'm gonna turn the wheel off real quick because duh. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I just wanted to show you that you can actually save pots that have overrun. I get so many messages on my Twitter and my Instagram and Facebook and the like asking me like, my pot ran, what should I do about it? And usually my answer is just to remake it if it's really bad. But the pot that I showed you today was really bad. But actually these two feet are actually extremely clean now. All thanks to the grinding process that I showed you in today's video. This was kind of a long video and it did razor down into you know, get a grindstone or get some type of sanding disc and grind away at your stuff. But if this video helped you, go ahead and click the like button to show the YouTube algorithm that um, 
that sometimes I'm worth the information I give. <laughs> but this is essentially the process that I go through in order to save a lot of my pots. And since I've been using a lot more crystal glazes recently, a lot more of my stuff ends up running if I combine it with other glazes like I did with these three. But thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If this video helped you, you already know where all the YouTube clickety clack buttons are. You're smart enough to know how to do the thing. Good luck on your next art projects. I hope this video helped you because there's so many people that ask me what to do with runny glazes. And my answer is either put less glaze on your pot or throw it away and make another one. But now with a sanding disc or a couple of wet stones, you can pretty much save your pot and make sure that you're not losing out on product or maybe a final graded art piece that you might need. The only condition is that you're probably going to have to either buy a grindstone or a sanding disc for your wheel. That being said, hopefully this video helps some of your potters out to save some of your more wanted pots. Good luck on your next art projects and I will see you dirty potters next week. Thank you for your patronage. Now it's time to grind this pot out like a high schooler in the bathroom when we should be in class.